Uh, we're going to be training a 14-week, um, 15-week-old Cocker Spaniel, uh, one of his early lessons. Uh, welcome to Mordor Gun Dogs. My name's Charlie Thorburn. Um, this week we've got a little puppy that we sold as a puppy. I think he went to his new home when he was about 11 weeks old. Um, he's a little tricolored cocker. We bred him and many generations before him and his owner is wanting to make a really good job of training him uh, and going to come up for regular lessons. So he's had one lesson with Ash, just a very, very early basic lesson when he got the puppy. And then now we're just going to move on, do a little bit of heel work, a little bit of lead stuff, sitting, very, very simple things, and just talk a little bit about the things that he should be looking for um, and the pitfalls that many people go into with a young dog. This little Alba, who's a um, four-month-old tricolour Mordor Cocker. Um, so you've been up for, you've had one lesson with Ash? Yep, one lesson. One lesson far. with Ash so far, about what, three weeks ago or something? How easy are you finding it to sort of follow the rules? Yeah, pretty easy. He's okay. been pretty good. It's okay. So far, so he's, he's been pretty good. Yeah. So we're we're sticking to the just little and often kind of yep. thing. Sort of twenty minutes, thirty minutes each day. Okay. And just repeating the same things, trying not to go too far ahead with him. What would you say the worst bit is? What's he doing? The like, what's he? What's his biggest uh, pitfall? What are you struggling with? I would say on the to heal on the lead. On the lead. Yeah, we're we're struggling a little bit. Some days he's really good. Okay. And other days he's not not quite so good. Okay. Yep. Okay. So the the if you just let me have his lead for yeah. a second. So the first thing, uh, just to sort of reiterate, the the first thing you, we've got to try and think about is not worrying about having him sit because like just there you're trying to make him sit yeah. while we're talking, yeah. um, and it's just unrealistic okay. because he's four months old. He's a, a he's a little boy with ADHD, yeah. and you're yeah. saying sit and listen. Dad's going to have a boring conversation. And, yes. and then you're repeating it and you're not really, you're sort of, you are following it through, but he can't, you're, he can't help himself yeah. because he's like, oh, but look, oh, but look, oh, but look, there's someone there, there's someone there, oh, I'm busy, I'm home. You know, he, he knows where he is because he was here till he was a bit older. He's been here again, you know, he's sort of like, oh, look. Yeah. So trying to get him to sit is, is probably just a bit beyond him. If you go around the corner there on your own and get him to sit and nothing else going on, that's different because yeah. that's yeah. A, a sitting lesson. But right here, all I would be doing is just trying to have that lead loose and just try and get him just to stand, stand with me without the lead going, going tight. Okay, he's obviously yeah. jumping up on me a little bit, so I'm, I'm not looking at him. I'm just, Nudging. I'm not like whacking him in the face, but I'm just, you know, moving my leg so that he gets down. If he's going for a bit of grass, now, then I'm giving him a tug. If he wants to SIT on his own, yeah. that's fine, because I haven't asked him. So if he stands up now, he's not breaking any rules because he hasn't no, been asked to, but all, the only rule I've asked from him is I'm just asking him to stay, it's just to stay uh, with the lead loose, okay? Yep. So that's all I'm expecting him to do in this kind of environment. And even then, I'm not expecting him to do it that long. But just the moment he goes to correct, goes to for that little tuft of grass, which he's quite keen on, he comes yep. to you, he goes for a bird over there, he goes for the dog, he goes for the camera. The moment he goes, I'm just, little correction, little correction. I'm not really saying, I'm not saying anything. I'm just showing him as soon as there's pressure on that lead and he moves, I'm going to correct him. Yeah. And it's just like, on his yeah. on his shoulder basically um and he'll do it for a bit and then and then what will happen is he'll then revert back because he gets bored again yep. um and so what we have to be careful careful of and and this is a obviously an what we're doing right now is an unusual environment because we're standing here talking and this isn't something i would tell people to do with a young dog yep. um we're just trying to get him get him to understand that, that like moving around on the lead isn't an option so that lead is just over my over my finger whereas you were slightly sort of standing yeah, kind of like that. So the things all the time. So basically what you're doing is you're leaning on him all the time and he's yeah. doing exactly what you just did, yeah, which is put your foot back and set yourself up so you can cope with it. Yeah. Whereas what I want you to do is just get used to just standing with the lead loose so that then he's not resisting against anything. He's using his own like self-awareness yeah. to control himself. Does that make sense? Yeah, because usually if I've got the lead on him, we're we're going, we're yeah. doing, I've not spent much time no. and, 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 and the old saying, there's an old saying, which, you know, in, you know, in English, which is, which is, uh, don't try and run before you can walk. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, my version of that with dogs is don't try and walk before you can stand. Yeah. If I can't stand with a dog not pulling, how the hell can I walk? How can I walk past another dog? How can I walk past a person? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so we, and then, and then once we've, once we've then stood there for a bit, what we want to try and do is break it up with him as well. So we've just stood for probably 10 minutes. Yeah. It's way too long. Circumstances are what they are. So that's just, that's just tough. But, but um, um, 
just doing that, a little thing like that, and then standing again for another 25 seconds, something like that. If you can do 20 and then you feel like you're going to lose him, do 20 and then 22 and yeah, 23. Yeah. You're always just trying to add like a few seconds on, yeah. not a few minutes. You're not going, oh, I tried a minute, I'll try 10 minutes. You're like, I can do a minute, I'm going to do a minute five. Yeah. I'm going to then do a minute 10. You're just, now I'm not sitting there with my watch because I just instinctively know how long I can kind of do it. I can tell by his body language. But if you feel like just literally watching your clock and thinking, right, he just, I know that he can consistently do it for, for 15 or 20 seconds, yeah. then you're just looking to do it for 20 or 25. Okay. Yep. Uh, and then in a few weeks time, you're looking to maybe get up to 30. And then, and what you find with, with, with dogs progression is it goes like that. You're edging your way up, edging your way up and suddenly woof, they're gone. Yeah. And we, we get this actually, we've had a few comments on our videos. It's like, They'll see a dog, they'll see me training a dog, and then the next time we film it, they're like, well, but what happened in the middle? It's like, we've just done so much of that, and suddenly the dog's gone like this, and it's literally in a few weeks, they've gone like that, and we just haven't done any filming. And it's like, yeah, but you've yeah. gone from a dog that could hardly do anything to a dog that's doing that. And I was like, that's just that consistency. It's gone dun, 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 dun. There's nothing to film, nothing new to do, nothing new to do. And suddenly, oh, shit, you're like, we've, we almost needed, like, we almost, there's like three sets of videos in that, in that day and a half, because, yeah. because they've just suddenly clicked and they've got it and that's and that's what we want to do and you see he's just getting a bit more whatever's happening over there he's just got a bit more determined like before I was giving him a couple of tugs and he was relinquishing and there he's got his oh he's got his sights on something and he's just trying really trying so I'm having to work a little bit harder to get him to to break that to break that what you know to break that that sort of focus so so that's the sort of thing that you've got to just be aware of and that when you were saying oh you know some days he's good some days he's not yeah. like five minutes ago he was good now he's not yeah, like it's it's it's, it's, normal. it's just reality yeah, yeah. And, the, and the and you're just trying to break it up with him as much as possible and because he stood still for quite a while when I move I'm moving a bit quicker just to make it a bit more interesting sit good boy heel again so you you know you've obviously well he was sitting for his food before you got him but you continued yeah. that on and his sit looks quite good but I'm not, sit. I'm one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm off again, okay? It's the same principle. I'm not going, oh, let's see how long I can sit and make him fail. I want him to sit. Three, four, sit. Because if he fails, I've got to correct him. Ah, ah, ah. Sit. Four, five, six, heel. So I just literally added a second on. Sorry, I sort of forgot to count out loud. So I'm so used to doing my head. Um, but um, I literally just added a second on and then woof, off we go. Yeah. Because that second, like if, if I've just added a second on in the space of a minute, then in a day or a month, or a, a day, a week or a month, I've added on a lot of time. Yeah. What, what, people, what people tend to do is, is they say sit and then they wait until it fails. And they go, oh, no, no, oh, but he did really well. Yeah. yeah, but you let him fail. You let him understand that. So just by releasing him off the sit, he's now not in a sit position. I haven't asked him to do it, so he can't, he can't yeah, fail because yeah. I haven't asked him to do anything. But by, by letting him fail, you're, you're actually you're, you're saying that failure is acceptable. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and yeah. it's a funny one because actually in terms of like people, like I'm a big fan of my kids failing at something not in a sort of malicious way, but just in a kind of like, well, look, you know, it's not all about winning and it's not all about kind of getting it right. There is failure and you just have to learn from your mistakes. Yeah. And the same, like if, you know, I was just saying to anyone who works for me or my kids, you know, if you break something, you smash it. Like, I mean, shit, I've, whatever you've done, I've done it 10 times. Yeah. Yep. But just come and tell me and just make sure you don't do it again. Yeah, you've if you come like back tomorrow and go, oh, I reverse the trailer into the barn again. Yeah. I reverse the quad into the, you know, again, you're like, well, you know, now you're just being a moron. Yeah. Dogs, however, we don't actually ever want them to fail. Yeah. In terms of the perfect dog training, the perfect dog training scenario, we want the dog to um, only learn that succeed, success is the only th option. And, and that's our success, not their success. Because their yeah, success yeah, yeah. is chasing a pheasant across the field. Our success is stopping and watching the pheasant fly across the field. Yeah. If he learns that chasing the pheasant is an option, he doesn't have the power of like reasoning like a 10 year old kid does to go, that's a failure, that's the thing I'm wanting to do. So I'm gonna, even though that was fun, I know that's not right and I wanna do, yeah. I wanna get it right. He doesn't have that ability. So what we wanna do is we also actually almost wanna like 
if we can not allow him into that zone of failure, yep. that's going to be more successful. Now, it's impossible. I've been doing this for a long time. And you're never going to get a dog to never fail. But you can really minimise the failures by just thinking about how you're setting them, set them up to succeed or to fail. Yeah, so a sit is a perfect example. If you're going to say sit until he fails, you're forcing the failure and, you're, and then you're showing him that failure is okay. Because when he stands up, he's like, oh well, he just says sit again and gives me another biscuit or another, gives me more attention. That's great. Whereas what I want to do is he goes, is sit, release him, sit, release him. And then he's like, that's just all I know. I don't know any different. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, um, sense. Yeah, yeah. And that's just a very simple version of it. And the heel is the same. If the lead is loose all the time, then the lead is loose all the time. He doesn't, he doesn't get the habit of having it like, it's all right, Lena, you can come across in front. <laughs> There's always lots going on. Um, lots of dogs being trained. Um, if you're thinking about how this might fail and how it might not work, then you're already winning. Yeah. Because he's standing there on the lead and you're like, I've been standing here too long. I know he's going to start pulling in a minute. Excuse me, I'm just going to go. But that's exactly why I've just, in, I've just picked him up. Yeah. Because I'm like, he's done, actually done really well. He's been standing reasonably well. He had a little, he got interested in it, something up there. I don't know what it was. I had to work a bit harder. Then I did a little scoot around. He did a couple of sits. Everything was going well. It's like, it's not going to keep going like that. No, no. So, so when I was talking about the the sort of curve of progression over the course of how it goes along flat for a while and suddenly you find yourself doing really well, then you, you hit a barrier of like the next challenge and then you go along again, you do really well and there are going to be like yeah. bits of failure, but if that's, that's roughly how it goes. But in terms of what happens next is they, in a, in a daily training session, you're going along, he's doing really well, he's doing really well, he's then like, he's not really improving, but he's kind of doing the same. Keep going, keep going, keep going, you hit the cliff, boom, you're off. Yeah. And then it's all gone to ratchet. Okay, and, and you're scrabbling around trying to kind of get him to do something just before you go back into the kennels now, or back into the house. Now, I've, we've all been there. Like, this is it's a regular thing. I'll see, so, I'll see myself doing it. I'll see guys that work for me and be like, quit. You've just done a really nice retrieve over the pond or whatever. Yeah. Call it a day. Go home. Yeah. And that, like, why do another one, you know, to, to, to fail? So that's the kind of, that's the, the ideal scenario is you never get into those situations. The dog never stands up on its own. It never pulls before you say, it never goes off, you know, you never, you never take the lead off and it runs before it's been asked. Yep. It, it never gets bored of a retrieving exercise. It never pushes through the door. Like all these things are like the, the dream. And we've got the odd Labrador, I'd say over the years that have just about done it. Yeah. We've got a really sweet, we've got a really sweet dog, Crunchy, who we just put down and I would say, I would say I don't remember Crunchy ever being told off for anything apart from taking shoes out of the locker in the house yeah. and carrying them around the kitchen. And we're like, oh, Crunchy, and we're putting them back. But otherwise, literally, I don't, I don't remember Crunchy ever being on a lead and her daughter Biscuit is not, is pretty similar. Yeah. Um, same thing, Biscuit carries shoes around. That's about all we're telling her off for. But otherwise, she's just there. She comes back when she's called. She never does anything wrong. Um, I think I once told her off for eating some horse shit or something yeah. at a demo, like I clipped her on the arse. I was like, oh, leave it alone, that's disgusting. And she's remembered it because she's such a soft, biddable, easy dog. But that's like, I would say in general world of dogs, that's the exception to the rule. And most of them are dogs that you're like, you're like, oh, well, I was just walking down the drive and a cat appeared and it chased the cat. Yeah. You know, it, it wasn't exactly planned. Um, talking of the cat. So she, he's obviously looking at the cat. Now, some people would be of the view, oh, well, he needs to learn. Yes. I know if I put him on the ground, there's birds flying around, there's the cat stalking the birds. If I put him on the ground, he's going to pull. Yes. He's going to pull on the lead. There's just no benefit. If I put him on the ground, he's not on the lead. He's going to go over to the cat. If I call him back, he's probably not going to come. Yes. So if I put him down right now, I've got little songbirds over there. I've got the cat down here. There's just nothing good is going to come of him being down because he's either going to pull on a lead, if, and if I try and prevent that, then, then I'm having an unnecessary battle with him. And if he, and if he um, is off the lead, he's going to be off down there playing. He's not going to be chasing the cat necessarily because he's, he's just a puppy. He's like, oh, look, there's the cat. And me standing here going, come on, little man, isn't going to have, it just isn't going to cut the mustard no. because, because it's like, but there's a cat there. Yeah. You know, he's just going to be more interested. So you, these are all the things you've got to be like thinking about. Um, in terms of like you're just your daily you've always got to be looking for the problems yeah. I'll give you another example so say we're in the yard there on the on the lawn yep. 
behind, uh, behind Ian. And we're going to walk out here. Okay, so we're going to walk him out of here. Now, yes, it's my house, I kind of know what's going on, but I don't really. Could be a Amazon driver coming up the drive. One of my crew could be coming around the corner with a dog. Uh, I don't know, there could be a sheep escape from the, from the field. Yep. Could be on my lawn. We could come around the corner and we get to there. The dog is already round here. He's seen the sheep or the cat or whatever it is and he's chasing it, okay? You then come 10 yards behind him, but you're like, where is he? Oh, what's he doing? Oh, shit. I didn't know that was going to be there. Yeah. Like, no, exactly. You didn't know it was going to be there. So what you've got to do is in that yard there, you think, right, I'm going to walk around the corner. So I'm going to have him on a lead or have him close engaging with him till I get to here. And then I can see, right, I've now got a clear vision of the next 70 yards. Yeah. Bear in mind, he's only going to be 15 yards from you. For the next 70 yards, I can see what I'm doing. Now, if I then get around the next corner at the end of the house, I do the same thing until it opens up. As I'm coming into the yard here, I'm like, is there anyone in there training dogs? No, fine, we can let them go. So the more like planning you've got in terms of thinking ahead of what might go wrong, yeah. then there's less, is, less or, lo or nothing is going to go wrong. I suppose it's back to preventing failure. Preventing failure, yeah. yeah. Because, yeah. because if he comes around the corner and chases the cat, and then by the time he's chased the cat, it's run up a tree, and you've noticed this all happening, he's probably already on his way back to you. And he's like, oh, that was fun. And now dad's calling me back and telling my good boy for coming back. Great. That's yeah. a big tick to, big tick to this guy. Yeah. And you're like, oh, shit. Oh, I don't want to let that happen again. Problem is, every time that happens, it's just a little memory, a little picture in his head. Because every, when we're training young, uh, any dog, but young dogs, it, the way I look at it is we're looking to create this sort of series of like little YouTube clips yeah. for him in his head. That's how I do that. Yeah. When I get to a door, I do, I wait. Why? Absolutely none of your business. Yeah. You're a spaniel. You don't pay the mortgage. You don't, you don't, you know, you, you, you just wait at the door because that's the rule. Yeah. And I don't need to explain it to them. And, and the same thing, like when you see a cat, you don't chase it. Why? Because I've told you not to. Yeah. That's just it. Oh, but it'd be, uh, dip, uh, bup, bup, shit, zip, you know, just literally let, there's no like, there's no conversation discussion about it. You're not having a chat with our wife or our best buddy about the best or our, or our manager the best way to run something it's just like yeah. this is the rule this is what we do it's very kind of controlling in a way but that's just because we know what's best yes. yep. um so although by by minimizing all those things it, in the same way as you know this guy doesn't know about moving cars yeah. his his family do his mum his dad his cousin his big sister you know if i i make a point of training my dogs when they're older i drive around on the atv i drive around in the vehicle slowly and i want them to learn oh there's a oh there's a car and they do the dogs do exactly what my kids do they just go and stand on the grass because they're like oh i know i don't get get i won't i know the vehicle won't come close to me and my kids from a young age both my kids i'm like if you see a vehicle go and get on the grass and my little four-year-old jack literally as soon as you start a car he's like like that because i've drilled it into him because I've done it over and over and over again because I'm basically, essentially, I'm looking to save his life. Yeah. Um, and it's the same with the, with the dogs. So, so we want them to learn that thing moves. Now, if, we, if, if I put him on the ground and start moving that car, he's going to be like, oh, what's under there? He's not going to have a clue because he's not old enough. He's not mature enough. And he's, so, so that would be a preventative thing at the moment with a view that we'll deal with that later when he's ready for it. And this is, again, a bit people struggle with with the way we train because they're like, oh, but they've got to learn. Yeah, they do. But in the same way, my four-year-old is not driving that vehicle. Well, not un unaided if he sits on my knee, but yeah. you, you know, they're not driving. Does that mean he'll never drive it? No, but he's going to be a good driver, but he's not going to learn to drive a vehicle probably till he's 10 or 12, yeah. as in farm, yeah. farm roads, DVLA, don't get in a pickle. Yeah. Um, uh, and this guy's going to be the same. It's, like, it's not like we're never going to, like, we want them to learn about vehicles, but we've got to find the point where they're mature enough and old enough, and they're not just a silly little puppy. Yeah. And they're like aware of it. Yeah. yeah. And so we might, the first time we do it, it might be a dog. You know, I might be in the yard with a dog and a vehicle comes in. And rather than panicking, going, oh, quick, 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 get them over. Because then you divert their attention off the vehicle and onto you. And then they're like, oh, what are we doing? And they end up running in front of it. Yeah. What I want to do is, is be more like controlling the driver. So someone comes in and I'll be like, I can slow down or I'll bloody bury you in the woods kind of thing to the postman. Yeah. But I'll leave the dog out because I want the, you know, I want the dog to learn, oh, look, there's something moving and it's going slowly. And I mean, even like, even in the past with our, with like an ATV, we've like, I've, I've just nudged the back of a dog on its bum. Just to teach 
just to be like, look, this, oh, what, what the hell? You know, they'll jump out the way. And it's very, very much, I'm in control. I know what the outcome's going to be. And the outcome is they're going to learn that that thing can bash them on the bum. And therefore, they're going to see it and go, oh, I don't like that because I can't explain it to them in a way that I explain it to my kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they just, ha they learn by association of the vehicle driving around. But, but my point with that is, is that that is something we'll do with him. Yeah. But we're not going to do that now. No. He's like a toddler. He's, he's just, that's too, we taught our kids pretty young to do that because this environment, they need to do that in the same way people who live in a town, need, the kids need to understand not to get off the pavement. You come down on them pretty hard, pretty fast at the early days, um, but you can explain it to them. When, when you're dealing with the dog and you can't explain them, you, you've got to make sure they're able to kind of figure it out yeah. with a bit of assistance. Yeah, makes sense, yep. Okay. Um, so yeah, big, big parts, big sort of major things to take home are, uh, uh, you, if he fails, it's because you've allowed him to fail yeah. because you're not bloody paying attention. People often say to me, oh, you know, oh, my dog chased something. And I'm like, well, stop it. And they're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not quick enough. It's not that you're not quick enough. You're not paying attention. Yeah, you're if you're walking along on your phone, like, oh yeah, let's go to the pub later. Your dog's going to see a cat and chase it before you sit. Whereas if you're walking along going, well, what is there for him to do? I can see way further than he can. Yeah. I, my eyes are far better than, in terms of the connection between my eyes and my brain. My eyes aren't better than his in the same way my eyes aren't better than my four-year-old kids. They're worse. Yeah. But my ability to scan and spot something is way better. You know, if, if I point at the tree and say, oh, do you see the buzzard? You would go, but, but, oh yeah, I see it. If I did that to my four-year-old, they'd be like, what? Where? Yeah. You know, they wouldn't have a clue because they don't have that they don't really know what they're looking for or where they're meant to look. Yeah. Whereas my 10 year old will know the buzzard is quite likely flying low or sitting in a tree somewhere yeah, or on a pilot. He's kind of got a better idea. Will, he, will the 10 year old pick it up as quickly as you or my wife? No, probably not. But there's a sort of a progression and dogs are just the same. It's the same yeah. yeah. So by being aware yourself, you'll see, oh look, there's someone coming through that gate. So you just call him back because you're hundred yards away. You yeah. call him back, you get him back on a lead. The person comes through the gate, it's like, off they go, they're, oh, they're going through that gate. You figure it all out and then you let them go again. Yeah. Rather than, oh, I didn't think he'd run over there. Yeah, don't give them the option. Yeah. 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 Um, and and the, way to, the way to manage that is he's on the ground and he's doing his own thing and you see something over there happening. Come on then, quick, 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 quick. We just become more interesting and quicker than that, that over there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the quicker I then, come on then. Toot, toot, toot. The quicker I move, he's got, he's got no time to see what else is going on because he's too busy. Good boy. He's too busy sort of going, what the hell is this lunatic doing? Because I'm more, you know, so it's not even that I'm more interesting than whatever's come through the gate. He just hasn't even seen it because as soon as I see it, I'm getting his attention back on me. Because I know that whatever that's, that is, is going to distract him. He's then going to get engaged, get distracted. And then I've got to work way harder to get him back. Yes. Whereas if I can get him before he's distracted, You've done the work. then I've done the work. Yeah. Another little, like fast, fast, fast forward, like a year. Mm -hmm. You're hunting your little dog through a wood for some pheasants or something on a, on a beating line or whatever. You and I know that you get to the end of the beating line and there's always a rhododendron bush or something yep. with half a dozen pheasants in it. Now, the beaters have come like this. The birds are going to go that way. So say that the van there is the, the bus there is the rhododendron bush. And I'm, the, dry, the birds are going that way and I'm coming through here and he's nice and close and he goes into this rhododendron bush. I know the outcome of this. The birds are going to come out the other side. So therefore he's going to come out the other side. Yep. So as I let him in here, I go, to there, okay, at that speed. Yeah. Because when he comes out on the back of two pheasants, cock pheasants going, Rah! and off they go, and he's like, whoa, that was fun, sit in your ass. Yeah. All right, okay, I'm just not giving him an option. Whereas if you're back here still, and then you're like, and then the, like, someone's like, oh, is that your little, is that your little tricolor cock? Oh yeah, he's down there with the guns. Because yeah. he's gone out the bush, and even though you've done loads of work with pheasants and not chasing them and stuff, he's gone out the end of the bush. No one's been there to say no. He hasn't got the maturity and self-control 
to just leave the bird and turn back to you or sit down. Yeah. So off he's gone out the end of the bush. However, the way I do it is I'm, every time he comes out that bush, I'm there saying, sit in your ass. When he comes out the bush in four or five time, goes time, as it were, he comes out the bush and he's like, the pheasants go, and then he's like, where's dad? And his focus is looking for me because he's so, they're so, my dogs become so expectant of me being there. They're like, how do you know I was going to do that? I had a laugh with my, with my, my kids the other day about my, because my son was doing something. And I was like, I know what you've done. You've done this, this, this. And he's like, how do you know? Because when I was your age, I was bloody naughty. And I had a really interesting kind of thought in my mind. And the reason kids don't get like caught at school as often as, you might think for doing naughty things. It's because all the people who go and become a teacher are all the good kids. They never did any of this yeah. shit, okay? Whereas if, if me and my wife were in school, none of these kids would ever get away with anything because we'd be like, right, if I was going to have a fag, I'd be down there. So if I was going to hide a bottle of vodka, it would be over there. Yeah. We'd have them all busted. Yeah. And it's really funny because, because, yeah, I'm the naughty kid kind of thing. So I know, I'm, but what I'm doing is I'm putting myself in the naughty kid's mind and my, in, my, in their mind, I know what they're going to do. So I set myself up to win. Okay? And that's the kind of, at this stage, where it's all about preventing, preventing problems. Because if you come back and see Ash and me in two months' time, and you're like, oh yeah, he's run off into the woods twice and disappeared, like we're like, oh God, you know, you've just, your, the, all the innocence that you've got in here now, all that lovely sweet innocence is gone. Yeah. And then you're like, on his case, getting cross with him, and it's like, battle, battle, battle. Whereas if you preserve this innocence by paying attention, you know, then when he's a year old and he sees his first kind of beating line and pheasant, he just goes, all oh, right, that's what daddy said. Yeah, he knows what to do. Yeah, and he just does it in an innocent way because he doesn't know any different. Because he's not thinking, oh, dad's not here. Fuck it, I'm off through the woods. Because I've done that at home loads of times. Oh, there's a deer, I get to chase them when dad's not paying attention. Yeah. Whereas if you've never allowed him to do that, he then starts to be mature enough to go, oh, well, I'm not meant to do that. Doesn't and that's why we don't let four-year-old kids drive cars. Because they don't have that ability to kind of, you know, manage their, manage like their thoughts and stuff. They just go, oh, this goes faster, you know. Yeah. So we allow them to pedal go-karts and stuff and, and grow in skill set. And then they get something with a little motor and, you know, so on and so forth. And they're progressing as they show you each level they succeed. And they, just the same. Okay. And you're terribly cute, aren't you? Hey, you're terribly sweet. Even if I did breed you myself, I think I've done a good job. If you do stay to yourself. If I do stay to <laughs> myself, yeah. Okay? Yep. Cool. Excellent, thank you. There's your lead. Perfect. And there's your wee dog. Thank you very much. Um, and then we didn't do anything with retrieving, so I wouldn't do retrieving here. Yeah. Because there's cats and dogs and things going on. I'd just be doing it in the, at home, uh, where, you know, in the house. So puppies, this, puppies of this age, generally my, all my retrieving would be done in a inside environment yeah. so just sitting on the floor throw a ball he comes back he climbs all over you gives you the ball back and we're done yeah. if i was going to do it outside i wouldn't do it where there's a big, big or just oh. big open area is not the problem it's the stuff What's in there? it's the, there's a dog in there barking there's a cat going past it's just like he's looking to explore because he's like oh i don't know this we're in your garden at home he's like well this is where i go five times a day for a pee it's still a slightly less interesting so when we take them into our exercise pens out there you know, it's just slightly less interesting because they're like, all right, there's a lot to do. Oh, you've got a ball, great. Because yeah. that's so much more high level than, oh, I'm going to have another piss on that bit of grass. You know, that's, yeah. it, so that, that's, whereas out here, they come out, they're like, oh, there's a pheasant in there and there's, oh, what's going on? You can see that even when he's on the lead. When I bring him out here today. Much more interesting because it's new. Yeah. 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 Okay. Remember, you get out what you put in. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you all next time.